Do you remember that I told you on my feature summary video for the November 2022 Power BI updates that my favorite feature was evaluate and log? Well, that was before I tested it. It's not anymore and I'm going to show you why. Let's get started. Okay, I show in a separate video that will be published at the same time as this one how to install the DAX debugger. And uh, I was excited about this tool because now that I'm learning Python, Python has a debugging feature, which is basically like you print whatever it is before and then you can see the results. So you can see where you are feeding to the next step. So neat. This is really, really helpful when you're a beginner. And I thought, oh, how cool that would be to see the same thing with DAX. I mean, the idea is, is just brilliant. That, I think, is what it would definitely help a lot of beginners to get started and troubleshoot their own measures. Um, my complaint it was that it had to be done in a separate tool. To be fair to Jeffrey, the one that created it, he said that he wished it to have it on Power BI Desktop number one, on third-party tools number two on his blog. I'm going to post a link to his blog where he explains these features in detail. So I guess it's more that you know, prioritization for the Power BI desktop team to actually implement this. So he created an external tool just to push it out. Fair enough. Okay. So I said, okay, let's let's give it a go. Let's give it a whirl. So I install it and try it. And uh, first of all, the first thing that first scenario that came to mind, it was like, oh, it would be so cool to be able to explain the difference between a sum as a measure or a sum as a calculated column, you know, it's one of the things that most beginners just have problems with. If you can see the intermediate steps to that calculation, people would understand. But I was not able to add calculated columns to the DAX debugger, which is a, a, a bummer for sure. But okay, let's say, okay, fine, it's just the uh, DAX measures, let's, let's give it a go. So we're going to do it together and you will see what I'm not happy about. I used the uh, 25 days of DAX Fridays edition one file to test it because I have a ton of DAX measures there so it's quite neat to use it. So I started with day one. Day one is calculate how many current products cost less than $20, okay? So this is the um, measure. And I came here and I said, okay, cool. I'm going to put evaluate and log in there. Just so you know, evaluate and log actually has three parameters. One is the actual function that you want to evaluate or measure. The other one, you can actually put a tag to it in case you have many. And then you can say how many results do you want to be returned in case you have large tables. Super neat. But you don't have to. You can just put evaluate and log and then it will do it. Okay. I think number one, feedback number one, is that it would be so neat to be able to do it the same way as you do it in Python. In Python you don't wrap things into something to be able to debug it. What you do is you copy these you paste it up there, and then you do evaluate and log up here, not down there. And then when you're done, you just delete it. And then you have your expression intact. In here, you will have to tinker with all the uh, parentheses, and you know how tricky that can get. So uh, version two, it would be lovely to be able to copy paste a blob and then just kill it or you can comment it in, comment it out as needed, right? Here, you don't have that option, but it's a minor complaint. Let's evaluate this. I'm going to go to the DAX debugger. Again, there's a video showing you how to install it. You have to jump a few hoops to do it. So once you install it, you can go here to connect, and then it will tell you this is the name of the Power BI files that I have open. This is the one where I tried to do the calculated column thing, failed miserably. So let's grab this. And um, one thing that I noticed is if you have already created a measure 
and you do evaluate and log and press enter, the DAX debugger, even if it's on, will not pick it up. So you have to like wake it up to live somehow. <laughs> so what I've done is I got rid of the statement, generate a blank and then paste it and then enter, which is a pain in the, mm? but hey, okay. So here we have our evaluation and doc. You're going to get a ton of events, by the way. So what I did is I killed everything and I just let the DAX evaluate and log um, outputs only because otherwise it was just like a jungle of stuff. Not interesting, thank you. But okay, it's nice to have it, right? But just know that you can uh, take them away. So evaluate and log. And this is what I found. Do you remember that I put M1? This is my M1. You can see it here. The, the actual DAX expression, and then the label that we put in one, and then this is the other one that doesn't have a label, right? And both of them give me the evaluate on log function is not executed due to optimization. Like, what? <laughs> what? So I actually Googled it, hoping, you know, this is very new that there was, you know, somebody figured it out, and well, Jeffrey himself created a part four, I'm going to post the link down below, where he explains what this does. And what this is saying, as I showed you before, DAX engine has two engines. So you have the formula engine, and then you have the uh, storage engine. So evaluate and log seems to work only on the storage engine. So if for whatever reason, your measure jumps over the, I mean, you have basically created an, eff an effective DAX expression, so it doesn't have to be evaluated on the storage engine, then it won't show here. And that, why? Like, I want to see it. I, I want to see the results regardless of the internal workings of DAX. I want to see what I am sending to the function above. And you can't do that. Only if they are evaluated on the storage engine will show. So if you are doing performance, I guess this is a cool way to know if the storage engine is involved or not but it defeats the purpose of debugging DAX. Anyhow, for me, at least. Um, so in the future, I would love to have both Formula Engine and Storage Engine results displayed, okay? So I said, okay, that didn't work either. Let's move on and see if I can make this work. So go back here. I got the day two we have which product is the most expensive, and this is definitely done in the storage engine. So I said, let's give it the word. Oh, by the way, you have to come here and remember to get rid of this. You do not want these operating. It's going to make everything slower and super confusing. So uh, there you go. So, and now I'm gonna to go to day two and put our evaluate and log. Do you see now what is the, it would be nicer to have it above or below? It doesn't matter, it's just where you put the evaluate and log. But yeah. Okay, so evaluate and log, do, 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 go to DAX debugger. And now I got it. Oh, cool. <laughs> that was nice. It didn't do it for me at the beginning, but maybe I was doing it wrong. Okay, so this is evaluating, not the results of a value, this is the result, it results a table, right? So the input is empty if it results on one table, is on Jeffrey's blog. I will, again, post the link down below so you can read it. And it gives you the output of these. Now, if you follow me on the 25 days of task writers and you've watched my solution videos, you know that I go through into detail as to how to create these intermediate tables. And the neat thing about Optogonity in Power BI Desktop as a table is that I can easily remove like product name or, or product supplier and rerun it very quickly. Here you can't. You, you have to go back to Power BI Desktop, delete it there, come back here and see the result. Why would I do that when I have a Power BI, a, a, a table that I can create on Power BI Desktop as I've done on all the solution videos on 25 days last Fridays? This will not be an effective way to do it. Maybe if you have like super complex DAX evaluations that, you know, it won't show in 
an intermediate table, fine. But as a tool for beginners to understand how DAX works, this is not it. Uh, for me, it's not. So, again, a few things. I think it has to be done in Power BI Desktop so you can modify the expression and see the results right away. It has to, you know, it would be nice to be able to write it in a separate line so you can comment it out very quickly or delete it very quickly once you're done, not twink with the DAX and the parentheses and all that stuff. I don't care if it's something is evaluated in the um, formula engine or even the storage engine. For me, it doesn't matter. I just want to see the results. So I want to see both. And I want to see if it is a calculated column or if it is a measure. Also, it shouldn't matter. I want to see the results and I want to see how they are calculated. So for me to use this, it needs more work because for the basic stuff, I can already do that in Power BI uh, tables, you know. So I will see if I can find like a harder case where this would make more sense and I will make a video about it. But if you are a beginner, don't be sad that you cannot install it. It's not for you yet. It needs a little bit of work. So if you try it, let me know what you think. And I will see you tomorrow with bite three of our Python game. So see you soon.